Is anyone up? It's um, where revengeful exes come for a peace of mind. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're discussing the shocking true story of the most hated man on the internet. That site was about destroying lives. Who would create a website like this? For this video, we'll be looking at the courageous people who took down the notorious website isanyoneup.com and its owner. Are you watching the most hated man on the internet? Let us know in the comments. Hacked On January 10th, 2012, then 24-year-old aspiring actress Kayla Laws was working her waitressing job when a friend phoned her to let her know that there was a topless photo of her online, accompanied by her name, city of residence, and social media information. Private photos that she'd taken of herself the previous October were now on the website isanyoneup.com, where explicit content and private information were regularly posted without consent. So I sent the photos to my email address. So I'm sitting there trying to figure out how my photos ended up on this website. Her email had been hacked. Kayla's mother, Charlotte, a former journalist and private investigator, immediately began trying to get the picture removed. The type of person that I know my mom is is that she won't just sit on her hands. I think right in that moment, she got to work. She contacted the site's owner, Hunter Moore, asking him to do so, but he refused. He just didn't care and pretty much just shut the door in my face, basically. And he was protected by the Communications Decency Act, which states that providers are not responsible for user-uploaded content. When Charlotte went to the LAPD for help, the detective didn't take the situation seriously. I told the detective, you know, if Kayla had taken the photo in her room and put it in a dresser drawer and someone had broken in and stolen it, would you be telling her that she shouldn't have taken the picture or would you be investigating the theft? She then contacted the FBI, who, at first, had a similar though more sympathetic response. However, once she referenced the case of actress Scarlett Johansson, they put her in touch with a detective. But they weren't giving me the immediate solution that I needed. I, the clock was ticking. Operation No More. Charlotte Laws embarked on her own investigation, collecting information on California-based Hunter Moore, the self-proclaimed professional life ruiner. By Moore's own admission, the purpose of Is Anyone Up? which he established in 2010, was public humiliation. But so you have no empathy? No, they're just people, they're characters and avatars and icons on a screen. Some of his other victims weren't even aware of their photos being online, making Charlotte the one to deliver the devastating news as she did her digging. These women were often in danger of losing their jobs, relationships, and overall safety. There were a lot of stories like this. Hunter Moore was willing to just post anything. I mean, the more it would impact somebody in a negative way, the more it would destroy their life, the better from his perspective. And the photos didn't just come from disgruntled ex-boyfriends, as is often the case with such crimes. By the end of February 2012, I had spoken to 40 victims who were posted within the two-week period that Kayla had been posted. And I had learned that 40% of them had never sent their pictures to anybody. During her investigation, Charlotte discovered that 40% of the photos on the site were obtained through hacking Facebook and email accounts. And 12% had their faces photoshopped or altered onto another woman's nude body. One woman even saw medical photos of her breasts uploaded to the site, likely obtained through hacking into her doctor's office. I looked through the IP addresses and two started to stick out. One of them we find is a apartment in Studio City, California. The other IP address is a business not far away. The hacker was Gary Jones, real name Charles Evans, who was also from California and had mutual Facebook friends with Kayla Laws. He reportedly worked for more from October 2011 until March 2012, during which time he hacked into the accounts of numerous people, including Kayla. There were multiple victims in multiple states. It was all over the country. By the time FBI agents came to the law's residence, Charlotte had a thick file ready to hand over. I had a huge box, like a 12-inch box, 
of information. I had found victims all over the country who had been hacked by the same hacker, and so I was able to give this information to the FBI. McGibney versus Moore. Digital activist and former Marine James McGibney reached out to Hunter Moore and established a rapport of sorts. Just like the Marines, you have to study your opponent. You have to study your prey. And I got to know more about Hunter's environment than Hunter knew about his environment. Then he offered to purchase Moore's site. By April 2012, Is Anyone Up was no more, and those who went to the link were rerouted to McGibney's anti-bullying site. Needless to say, Moore's following was shocked. I saw that word sellout, hashtag sellout, hashtag Hunter Moore, thousands of times. It was actually trending at one point. Moore subsequently took to Twitter and made obscene and disturbing comments about McGibney's wife and accused him of engaging in inappropriate acts with minors. McGibney quickly filed a lawsuit against Moore for defamation, and in March 2013, the latter man was ordered to pay up. And that's how it's gonna be with Hunter and I for the rest of his life. Whenever he pops up, I'm gonna smack him right back down. Anonymous and Operation Hunt Hunter. In April 2012, Laws and Moore were both guests on Dr. Drew's show, where they had a heated exchange. I think he was very, upset that a woman was standing up to him and she was representing all women, all of the victims on his site. Now that his followers knew who she was, Charlotte received death threats and had a stalker outside of her house. Her computer was also attacked with several viruses. The hacktivist collective known as Anonymous reached out to her, offering help and protection. I didn't really know if Jack was the real deal or not. It was kind of more of a hope that he was real, but the following day, Anonymous went after Hunter Moore. Meanwhile, before Is Anyone Up was shut down, Anonymous had also contacted James McGibney, expressing interest in working together to take Moore down, which they ended up doing. And they said, what's your plan? What do you want to do? I really truly wanted to destroy his life, just like he had destroyed all these women's lives. After Moore made threats to McGibney's family and claimed he'd be creating new sites, the underground group went after him again, in early December 2012, Anonymous launched their campaign Operation Hunt Hunter, or hashtag Op Hunt Hunter. Moore didn't seem to take the threat seriously, but the group followed through on doxing him, posting his detailed personal information online. They also hacked into his servers and accessed his credit card number. And money was siphoned out from the bank accounts and donated to battered women shelters throughout the United States. There was a death certificate that was filed in the state of California that had Hunter Moore legally dead. Trial and conviction. The FBI arrested Hunter Moore and Charles Gary Jones Evans on January 23rd, 2014. The two were charged with conspiracy, multiple counts of unauthorized access to a protected computer, and multiple counts of aggravated identity theft. Hey, Hunter, pretty quiet. Where's all the mouth? Where's all the talk? Days later, Moore got out on a $100,000 bond. The then 27-year-old was ordered to stay with his parents and remain off the internet. His mom and dad were also required to install parental controls. Hunter and his attorney kept pushing the court date. They don't want to go to jail, so they just keep postponing and postponing and postponing. It was frustrating. In February 2015, Moore pled guilty, facing between two and seven years in jail, plus a half a million dollar fine. In July of that year, Charles Evans pled guilty to identity theft and computer hacking, admitting that he was responsible for selling the photos obtained without consent to Moore. I was happy with the plea agreement. There's more victims out there, yes. But in this case, the number of charges doesn't necessarily determine how much jail time you're gonna get. In November 2015, Evans received a 25-month federal prison sentence, and in December, Moore was sentenced to two years and six months in prison, plus three years probation and a $2,000 fine. The positive was he was off the street, he was going to prison, he wasn't gonna be able to continue to victimize women. He began serving his sentence in January 2016. Moore was released in 2017. The most hated man on the internet. Since bringing Hunter Moore to justice, Charlotte Laws has continued her work with victims of such crimes and lobbying for laws to protect them. Hacking so many people, posting so many people, but then he got to me. And along with me comes my mom. And my mom is not a person you want to cross. In July 2022, Netflix released a documentary series 
The Most Hated Man on the Internet, a title more received from the BBC and Rolling Stone. Charlotte and Kayla Laws appear, as well as James McGibney. Though it does put the criminal back in the media, the docuseries focuses on the voices of those who've long gone unheard, the victims. There were a lot of emotions confronting someone who does something like this to you. 